Hello and welcome to another section of this complete Node.js course. In this section, we will learn what is Express.js and why do we use it. Express.js is a free and open source web application framework for Node.js. Express is a minimal and flexible Node.js web application framework that provides a robust set of features for web and mobile application development. In simple words, we can say that Express helps us develop Node.js application by writing minimum Node.js code. It simplifies complex Node.js codes with simple one or two line of codes. So, Express is a Node.js framework. This means that Express.js provides some built-in classes and functions which we can use while developing a web application. And we can write complex functionalities with simple one or two line of code. Without Express, if we try to write the same functionality with core Node.js, the number of line of code can be large and we as a developer will have to write some complex logics to achieve the same thing. But with Express, it can be done with few line of codes and the complexity of the code is taken away by Express as the functionality is already defined by this framework. Right? So, remember that Express is completely built on Node.js. That means behind the scenes, Express is built 100% using Node.js. It is also one of the most popular Node.js frameworks. There are few other frameworks as well, but Express has become kind of a standard in Node.js application development. Express contains a very robust and very useful set of features. Things like complex routing, easier handling of requests and responses, adding middleware, server-side rendering, and many more things are all included out of the box with Express. Express allows us to write Node.js application faster and also simpler by providing us developers a predefined method for almost every complex task in Node.js. And with Express, we can also organize our application to MVC architecture, which is very popular software architecture pattern that we will also explore a bit during this course. So again, Express is a Node.js framework which help developers write Node.js program in a simple and much faster way. Express makes a developer's life with Node.js very much easier. So now that we know what is Express and why should we use Express instead of using vanilla Node.js to write Node.js code, Let's now go ahead and install Express.js for our project. Let's go to VS Code. Here I have created a brand new project. So this is our project folder with this name Node.js with Express. Now the first thing which I'm going to do here is for this project, I'm going to generate a package.json file. And to do that, let's open terminal. Let's go to this new terminal option and it is going to open a new terminal here. To generate a package.json file for the project, all we have to do is we have to type this npm command npm in it. If I press enter, it is going to ask a bunch of questions. So let me move this terminal a bit up so that it will be more readable. So first of all, it is asking for the package name. Now here you can provide a package name and that package name should be URL friendly. The words in that package name should not be separated by spaces. It should be separated by a hyphen, like you can see in this example. Okay, so I'm going to use this same default name for the package name for my project. All right, so here I will not provide any name. So if I press enter, it is going to use this default name. And for the version also, I will keep the version as 1.0.0. Let's press enter. Description, I don't want to give any description. Or let's say learning Express JS with Node.js. Let's press enter. So here it is asking for the file name, which is going to be the entry point for this project. By default, it is specifying this index.js. So if we don't provide any name, it is going to use this index.js as the entry point. But here I want to call my file, which is going to be the entry point for this project as app.js. Okay, so I will provide that name. Let's press enter. Test command, we don't have any. Get repository, we don't have any. Keywords, I don't want to provide any keywords. Author, here I will put my name. Let's press enter. License, let's use the default one, this ISC license. Let's press enter. And now it is asking whether this content for the package.json file is okay or not. So basically, when I press enter here, it is going to generate the package.json file. And in that package.json file, this is going to be the content. So here, VS Code is confirming whether this content is okay for me or not for the package.json file. 
So basically, this content is okay for me. So I will simply press enter. And now you will notice that a file with this name package.json has been created here. And in this package.json file, we have all the configuration related data for this project. For example, the name of the project, version of the project, description, what is going to be the entry point for the project, who is the author, what is the license this project is using, and so on. Okay, let me go ahead and let me clear the console by typing this CLS command. And the next thing which I want to do is, I want to install Express for this project. And to install Express, we are going to use another npm command, npm install. So using this npm install command, we can install a package from npm repository. Here, the package which we want to install is called as Express. So I will specify that name. And when I press enter, it is going to install that package. So the package is being installed. And once this package is installed, you will notice that in this package.json file, a new field called dependencies have been added. And in that field, we have this express listed. So basically, this express is going to be a regular dependency for this project. The code which we are going to write that depends on this express package. And with that, a folder called node modules has also been created. And in this folder, you will see that we have a folder called express. And in this folder, we have all the code, all the files related to express.js framework. Now, you will also ask, what are these folders for? Well, this express.js framework, it might have its own dependencies. So in order for this express.js framework to work properly, we also need to install those dependencies. So behind the scenes, when we installed express.js, the dependencies for this express.js were also installed. And these are those dependencies. All right. Now, the next thing which I'm going to do is, I am going to create an app.js file. So inside this project folder, I'm going to create a new file. I will call it app.js. And this file, this app.js is going to be our entry point. Okay, if you see in the package.json, for the entry point for this main, we have specified app.js. So this app.js is going to be our entry point. And in this app.js, we are going to keep all the configuration related to express.js. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's require the express package or let's import express package. Now keep in mind that this express is a third party package. So here we are going to import a third party package. Now we have already learned how to import a package. For that, we use this require function. To this require function, we need to pass the package name within single quotes. So the package name here is express. Now, when we are requiring this express package, what this line of code will do is, it is going to return a function. And we want to assign that function to a variable. So here, I'm going to create a variable and I will call it express. And to this express, I want to assign the function which this express package is going to return. And once that function is assigned to this express variable, I want to call that function. So to call that function on this express variable, we can use a set of parentheses. So here we are calling the function which this line of code has returned and which is assigned to this express variable. And now when we are calling that function, it is going to return an object. So let's go ahead and let's store that object in a variable and let's call that object app. So this app variable here is going to store an object. And in that object, we have a bunch of methods which we can use in our Node.js application. For example, let's say we want to create a server. To create a server on this app object, we are going to have a method called listen. So this listen method, what it is going to do is, it is going to create a server and then it will also listen to the requests on that server. Now to this listen method, we need to provide some arguments. The first argument which we need to provide here is the port number. So let me go ahead and let me create another variable. I will call it port. And to this, let's assign a port number, let's say 3000. And let's pass this port variable as the first argument to this listen method. All right. And the second argument which we need to pass here is a callback function. For that, I'm using this arrow function syntax. Now, this callback function will be executed as soon as the server starts. That means as soon as the server is ready to receive requests. 
So inside this callback function, let me go ahead and let me log a console message saying that server has started. All right. With this, if I save the changes, let me go ahead and clear the console first. And let's now go ahead and let's run this app.js file. For that, we can use this command node space app.js. If I press enter, you will see that this message server has started has been logged here. That means now we have started this node.js server. Okay, and where it is listening, it is listening to the local host and the port number is 3000. Now what we want is we want to handle some routes. So for example, let's say whenever a user makes a request, a get request to the root URL, we want to send some response. So in the previous section, we learned how to handle routes. But here, since we are using Express.js, in Express.js, the routes are handled a bit differently. Keep in mind that a route consists of the URL plus the HTTP method. Let me put a comment here. So route equals HTTP method plus URL. For example, let's say you are making a GET request to the root URL. So the route here is the HTTP method is GET and the URL is the root URL. Now, if you're making a POST request to the root URL, then the route will be the method is HTTP POST and the URL is the root URL. Okay, so a route consists of the HTTP method, for example, get, post, put, delete, etc. and the URL. So let's say we want to define a route where we want to handle the root URL whenever a GET request is made on that root URL. So for that, on this app, on this app object, we have another method called GET. So using this GET method, we can handle GET requests on the URL. The first argument of this GET method is the URL. Here, we want to handle root URL. For that, we can please specify a slash like this. Now, whenever a GET request is made on this root URL, we want to do something. For that, as the second argument to this GET method, we can pass a callback function. And this callback function will be called whenever a GET request will be made on this specified URL. In this case, on this root URL. And this callback function is going to receive two important arguments, the request object and the response object. And now from within this callback function, we can send some response whenever a GET request is made on this root URL. And to send a response on the response object, which we are receiving as the argument here, we have a method called send. And using this send method, we can send an HTML response or a text response. For now, let's simply send a text response. So here, let's say, hello from express server. Okay. Now, before sending the response, if you also want to set the status code, on this response object, we have another method called status. Okay, now keep in mind that if you want to set the status, you need to set it before sending the response. Okay, here we are doing the method chaining. So before the response is sent, we want to set the status of the response. Here, let's say the status is 200. All right, so what is happening here? Whenever a GET request will be made on this root URL, this callback function is going to be executed. And from within this callback function, we are sending a response First, we are setting its status code to 200 and then we are sending a response. We are sending this text response. Let's verify this. So here I will save the changes. Let's stop the server by pressing Ctrl C and let's restart the server. Let's go to the browser and here let's type the URL. So here we have to specify the local host, which is 127.0.0.1 and the port number here is 3000 because that's the port number we have specified. And here you will see this response. Hello from Express Server. This is the same response which we are sending when the user makes a GET request on this URL, on the root URL. Right, we are sending this response. Now using this send method, we can also send HTML response. So what I will do is I will wrap this text within H4 element. Okay, let's save the changes again. Let's stop the server by pressing Ctrl C and let's restart the server and let's go back to the browser. And now if I make a GET request to this root URL, now we should receive some HTML response. So now you can see that this text is bolded. 
all right now keep in mind that when we use send method to send a response the content type of the response is by default set as text slash html but let's say we want to send some json response in that case we cannot use this send method because as i mentioned when we use send method the content type of the response is set as text slash html but when we want to send a json response in that case the content type should be application slash json so to send a json response instead of using send we need to use json all right and here we need to send some json response for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a set of curly braces there let's specify a property maybe message and let's say message is hello world and let's also specify another property maybe status and let's set it to maybe 200 so now we want to send a json response so when we are using this json method in that case the content type of the response will be set as application slash json and the json response will be sent let's see that let's save the changes here let's stop the server by pressing ctrl c and let's restart the server let's go back to the browser and let's make a request to this root url and now you will notice that here we are receiving a json response let's go back to vs code now here we are making a get request to this root url but what if we want to make a post request so if we make a post request to this root URL, in that case, this route will not be executed because this route will only get executed when we make a get request on the root URL. So to handle post request, we will need to define another route. For that, on this app object, we have another method called post. So using this post method, we can handle post requests. Here, we want to handle post request on this root URL. So there, I will simply provide slash and then we can pass a callback function here and this callback function will be executed whenever a post request is made on this root url and from within this callback function we can write some logic which we want to execute whenever a post request is made on this root url okay so in this lecture we learned what is express.js and why should we use express.js instead of using vanilla node.js because when we use Express.js, it minimizes the number of lines of code which we write. Behind the scenes, Express.js is already using Node.js. But with Express.js, we need to write a fewer lines of code. Alright, so in this section, we are going to learn all about Express.js. And we are also going to create some APIs. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.